Okay, um, that was a really in-depth beginning and architecture talk. Now I'm going to move to a detailed subject, but also plans for the future. So we are changing subjects quite, quite much. We are going to talk about the Yocta project security now and the future. Who am I? Wanna, why am I talking about all that? Uh, my name is Marta. If you cannot pronounce my last name, that's not a big deal. I'm used to that. Um, I have a PhD in telecommunications, specializing in network security, have been doing open source for the last like 20 years notably being the Vice President Treasurer of KDEV, the organization behind the KDEV environment. I've been also writing guest articles at IWNet. Now, what I'm mostly doing is to work on uh, supply chain security. Uh, and I'm offering um, open source security related services. At the Yocta project, I've been contributing certain things that you may know, the JSON output of the CDJ, NVD, APA to Fetcher, and more things some of them will be talking about today. My name is Marta, and I'm really going to rush a little bit less than the previous presentation today. Now, We have quite many security related features in the Yocta project. So I would like to give you as a context, a little bit of the state of the Yocta project 2023. The things you may know already, you may be using them. Those are my personal picks. Uh, personal, um, picks. We do have compiler hardening options in Open Embedded MetaConf Distro include security flags. You are likely already using them and indirectly, but if you are building your own distribution, do not forget to include. We have the CD check, a tool that allows you to check your image, your SDK for the known and fixed security issues. All you need to do is to add inherit CV check in your local account. You run your build as usual, and then you get the level file. We also in the CV check support for patches with security fixes if they follow the naming scheme I've been presenting like an hour ago. So that is already quite nice, but it doesn't stop here. We have the CD flow and the LTS workflow, so the long-term support workflow, that takes into account that patches need to go from the master branch to the LTS versions, we are backporting security fixes to all the releases. We have security focus layer, meta security with all the sub layers, and you can find a lot of interesting stuff in there. And one thing that you may, maybe are not considering a security feature is the uh, Yocto project layer compatible program, which is in for enforcing your layer to adhere to certain best practices that do have security impact. Imagine, uh, for example, a layer that modifies behavior of a package uh, in a different layer in a in an unclear way. This may have security impacts. 
it, it may be introducing security vulnerability. And if your layers adhere to the your top project compatible program, they do not have that issue and they are following practices that make them easier to use and also make the um, impact of the security issue a little bit smaller. We also have documentation. Two documents I would like to point you to from the general standpoint uh, is the chapter making images more secure from the dev manual and the document what I wish I'd known about the Octo project. They are not directly security, but better quality means better security. Now, not so good part. Things that I consider weaknesses in the typical usage of the Octo project. The first one, debug tweaks. That allows, among other things, root logging without a password. That should be for testing only, but we know what happens with testing options everyone forgot about. For my taste, too many examples use the actrix. As also some default in Pocky could have been different. I have my personal preferences with that. And finally, at the beginning of 2023, the Yocto project was lacking formal security processes. So, fast forward, end of 2023, there are things that happened between those two points, you might have heard about them, but maybe you would like to know a little bit more about them. In the context of all that happening, or at least some of it happening, is the funding for, from the Southern Tech Fund. And what are the things that happened in that um, in that time period. Now, let's meet the Yocto project security team. This is a team handling potential security reports to the Yocto project. People can report either to Bugzilla or to the mailing list security at yoctoproject.org. All the fixes that are being submitted by the Yocto security team go through the usual review process, they're not based on bypass. We are also now recommending every layer to have a security MD file that gives information for security researchers on how to contact that particular layer for a possible security issue. What you do in there, you decide you can redirect to the Yocta project security team or to some people from that layer. We also have documented the process in the dev manual. You have a new chapter. You can have a look and read about how it works. What I'd like to show you in a little more detail is what happens if we get one day a new vulnerability somewhere in the Octa project. We assume that this will be the security team that receives the issue. And there are two options now. Option now is that the core issue is somewhere upstream. We received an issue that should be fixed upstream. What we are going to do in such a case, we communicate with the affected upstream privately. When they release a fix, 
we backport it publicly to the Active Project. But there's also a second option, second possibility. If the core issue is in the Active Project, let's say somewhere in Bitbeck, then the Yocto project will have a look, find people who can help in preparing the fix, domain experts that we'd like to talk to to understand how to handle the issue. We are going to communicate with the reporter on the fix itself, on the schedule of the release, on the schedule of the communication about the issue. There will be first private testing of the fix, and then the fix will be submitted publicly and go through the backport process as usual. You may see this happening in the Yocto project from, from now on. And you may be one of those domain experts that the security team will contact nicely at some point and hmm, could you help us with that little thing? Now, um, we have more documentation. The whole process of vulnerability reporting and handling is documented in the manual. We have also a more detailed chapter on CV fixes in the dev manual. Also, the examples I used in the presentation an hour ago come from the manual. More documentation is coming. It's a work in progress. But we also have more work in progress. If you have an initiative, related to security that you would like to propose, to lead, to contribute, there is Yocto security mailing list, a separate list for security discussion. This list is public. So you can discuss all ideas that you have on security in there without the whole noise um, that we have on the the list. And I have chosen two discussions that could have been happening on that list. Um, and they are pretty interesting about initiatives that people are implementing for the, the project. One of them is the support for components that are inside of the package. Currently, the CV checker is also only checking the main recipe version, but if that recipe contains all the software elements, it may be interesting to have a look at the CVs in that context. And there was another discussion about uh, handling users and groups in a more secure way. An example, those are two examples, they are way more of such interesting discussions. Then we have the work on the CV synchronization. In this case, we have an observation that two persons of team are sometimes working on the same fix without knowing about each other. And when they start submitting a fix, they realize that they have wasted at least half of the time. So the proposal is to use a single synchronization point, who is working on which one and share information. For example, share information that there is no upstream fix yet to avoid people to have a look at this yet again. Have a look at the wiki if you are interested. I already received one message about the contribution to the synchronization, so that's that's a really uh, good sign. I received one message between the previous talk and this one. Now, another initiative is sometimes 
we may want to know or you may receive a manager's question is Yocto project affected by insert a CV number in there and that could be complicated because what you have is CV check that gives information on specific issues and you can a known issue you will get information in a given package it is fixed or not but there are quite many other cities that never show up in those reports and those are around a thousand per week in this initiative we are discussing an SL2 update by David Joyner and team. There is another presentation later today about the subject and the discussion is open to join. Ask Martha or David, so me or David, if, if you are interested to participate. Then, a new version of SPDX will be published soon. The improvement from the SPDX2 is a better handling of composition and it's more modular. You can say which part of the SDOM you want to get. We have a proof of concept work available for everyone to have a look. The spec is not published yet, there are still some changes and there are discussions happening, including, for example, Joshua. If you are interested in the SPDX work, contact us. If you are interested, you can be added to the loop. Now, what can happen in the future or what is going to happen in the future? First, about what is going to happen in the future and in pretty close future, because on December 15th, the NVD database is the base of the CV check. Historically, the CV check was using the JSON fate uh, of, uh, of the database. This has been replaced in 2023 by the IP20, which has been implemented also uh, in all recent versions of the Yota project. If you are up to date, if you are up to date with a supported version, master or LTS of the Yota project, then you have nothing to do. If you are in an old version, and, for example, had an idea to backport the CV check to your old version, it will just stop working. Time to update. You can also have a look at the next uh, timeline change. The deadline has been already pushed forward a few times. We are going to see when it happens and actually and what will happen when they do that because uh, all the versions of your the Yocta project are not the only one affected by the change but for all other subjects related to security of the Yocta project what will happen next that depends on you If you are interested or you are benefiting from an existing initiative, existing functionality, convince your company to join. To join either on development time or on export time. For example, we, need, we may need people to for city triage. You can also contribute, contribute individually. Remember that security doesn't happen just like that. It requires work. 
and you can contribute before you will be forced to. The registration is coming, some people have already mentioned, and embedded Linux security has a pretty bad opinion in the security world. So we are going to hear more about that. If by any chance you haven't heard about the CRA, I wrote an article for LWN. That could be a nice introduction about the mindset 